What good could possibly come from putting girls in the Boy Scouts, eliminating Boy Scouts? What's wrong with being special? The Boy Scouts now are no longer the Boy Scouts. They're going to be allowing girls to join the Boy Scouts. Here's my genuine question of the day. I'd love to hear uh, back from people. We were all asking this in the morning. What is, genuinely, what's wrong with men and women being different? Yeah. Tell me, I'd like to see in the comments section, what good could possibly come from putting girls in the Boy Scouts, eliminating Boy Scouts? What's wrong with being special? I, I don't understand. I don't understand it when you had Girl Scouts, you had Brownies and Boy Scouts. What good can possibly come of this? Of course, this is everywhere today, USA Today. Uh, as we enter a new era for our organization, it is important that all youth can see themselves in scouting in every way possible. I don't know. I don't know what that means in every means. way possible. I don't, I don't know, know what that, that means. I've never seen that. It's like Girl Scouts. That's Girl Scouts is a good start, but we think girls should be Boy Scouts. So Chief Scout Executive Mike Sarbaugh released an official statement. Of course, it's been met with praise by the far left, progressive left, and uh, uh, it's been met with praise by the Scouts, with the exception of the newly minted gay leaders you heard of from last year who have called the move, quote, a boner killer. So they're not thrilled about it. <laughs> So new merit badges include the gender inclusivity badge, the new friend zone medallion, and mini condoms. Yeah, for when you throw up and you, you, you pitch those Congo tents. Seriously, were they just allowed the gay leaders in there? You know, they're like, oh, now I got to make a gimp brace with these blocking girls? And the Girl Scout cookie sales, by the way, have taken a huge hit, losing a lot of sales to the new co-ed peep show, but <laughs> it's, it, it is, isn't it kind of ironic that the left today, and this is the progressive left, they want to remove the original safe spaces. We talk about society, we talk about in college how we need safe spaces now. Everyone needs a safe space. These kinds of organizations were the original actual safe space. They weren't mandated, but male clubs, the females had clubs. These were clubs where people could bond without the opposite sex around them because they felt comfortable. Right? How many of them have we lost? We've lost fraternities. We left all, we've lost all kinds of exclusively male clubs. And by the way, boys are incredibly uncomfortable around young girls. There are certain things that they will do. There's certain information that they will share only in the presence of other men and male leadership. I still am uncomfortable around girls. <laughs> Boy Scouts were developed. It was created around this concept that we're going to do things little boys like to do. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just like Girl Scouts are different things. That's why they sold brownies and Boy Scouts. My, my father-in-law joined the Boy Scouts so he could get his knife. As soon as he got his pocket knife, he threw it at another Boy Scout and was immediately kicked out. <laughs> that is as what the Boy Scouts as been. he should have been. Yeah. <laughs> but here's, it, it's just to me, again, what good can possibly come of this? Because we've tried raising young men for the last several decades the progressives way. Look at public schools. It's, it's exclusively designed for, 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 for women, okay? Study after study shows that's why girls do better in grade school than young boys, but then boys do better in the SATs and you see this discrepancy in college. So we're talking about in college how there are so many men who go into sciences and how there are men dominate these, these mathematical and science-focused uh, science, uh, fields, but guess what? They were, they, they, were, they were behind all throughout grade school and high school because public school is designed to educate people the way girls learn. They sit down and listen to someone speak. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> the idea of toxic masculinity, gender neutral toys, right? No more male only spaces. They've slowly been eroding this for a long time. We've tried raising young men the progressive way and it hasn't worked. But here's another thing too, we're trying to empower women. You see this with the Girl Scouts? Mm -hmm. We're gonna empower the girls by al allowing them to join the Boy Scouts. But they had the Girl Scouts. We're trying to empower women by telling them to be just like men, yeah. which does them a great disservice. You're teaching people that they're all interchangeable. You don't, you don't empower Charles Xavier by telling him that he could be the Hulk, okay? <laughs> just like you don't, have to, you don't help women by telling them they can be just as good as any man in any area or vice versa. This isn't, this isn't about telling young girls that they're inferior. Right? It's about being honest with young girls. It's about being honest with young boys, saying, hey, listen, you're a young boy. You know what? You're stronger than your sister. I used to have it with my cousin. You're stronger than your yeah. cousin. You're stronger, so be careful, little Steven. Hey, listen, you're faster. Hey, listen, you're more physical. Hey, you're gonna be counted on to protect because you're more capable of that. So we teach young men where they have certain qualities unique to their gender, which we're not supposed to know. With young girls, we should be saying, hey, listen, you're more agreeable, which is actually very valuable in many instances of caring for people and even in business. Yep. Listen, on average, you're more patient. You're more capable of listening. You're more articulate. You're better at communicating verbally. But instead we say, yeah, you can lift the weights just like the guy and you can go build a gimp bracelet and take a sh in the woods. <laughs> well, here's a problem. It doesn't just hurt men, it hurts women, right? So now we have yeah. this, this, this syndrome, what they call second adolescence, psychologists, doctors are calling it. Millennials are one of the, they're one of the most single generations uh, in decades. And then you have women complaining that men are less manly than ever. Mm -hmm. 
You have that women hit their 30s now and they're going because men aren't getting married until they're 27. It's called second adolescent. Now, I always find this funny when they go, hey, you're young. You've got plenty of time to like a 25-year-old. <laughs> At one point, you had four kids. You might yeah. have, it, Not that long ago, you had nine kids because you knew four of them would get taken out by a horse or something. <laughs> or a tiger. So you were just playing the odds. But now you have women after second adolescence complaining that they can't find a man with the kind of qualities they want. But that's because you, not all women, but feminist, a feminist society, has bred manliness out of men. You scared them off with your brow beating and your pussy hats. <laughs> Ironically, too, when you when you breed confidence out of men, you create more bullies. Because now yeah. you just have a bunch of insecure men running rampant, not knowing what to do themselves. Well, when, when you create false confidence. False. When it's not earned confidence. No, no, when you rip confidence out of men. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you rip confidence out of men and then give them false confidence for things they, don't, they haven't really earned. Sure. That's the problem with it. Yeah, and you have that guy that in Canada that ran people over because he couldn't he couldn't relate with women and kind of, you know, get laid. Yeah, and that's, that is he, then he blames women. And then yeah, he, we'll get to that. That's reaching too far the other way. So w women, they want boys now. They want, well, listen, let's let's just, everyone's interchangeable until they're about 30. And then their biological clock starts ticking like this. And all of a sudden, they want masculine men. Now, here's the thing. There used to be a give and take. And you, this is, I, I know sometimes people just talk about the good old days and folks say, well, there are no really, there were no good old days. And I get it. Some things needed to be improved. But there used to be a mutual appreciation with the complementarianism of men and women. That's what we had Boy Scouts. That's what we had Girl Scouts. And people didn't need to start a march, okay? Men and women didn't own different roles because they hated each other, because they loved each other, right? A man said, all right, I've been burnt. This is one thing too, by the way, women out there. I hope you understand this. When women say, you don't know pain, you don't know what, being a mother is the hardest job in the world. You don't know pain, you don't give birth. Let me give you a little bit of context because we get a lot of emails from young men. Men, as soon as they are old enough to understand the concept of being a man, boom, burn with the pressure of providing for their family for the rest of their lives. So they know it. They know it's expected of them. Sure, women can work if they want to, but it's not expected of you. That is the kind of compression that is unique to the male biology. Now, it doesn't mean that women do not have compressions, do not have stressors that are unique to women. Back in the day, men didn't go out and earn for the family and come because they hated their wives. They didn't go down to the coal mines and get the black lung because they wanted to come home and tell their wife about what a horrible person she was. And hey, but, but, but the woman didn't change all kinds of diapers and didn't cook meals for her family because she hated her husband. They did it because they understood that they loved each other. And in order to make it work, we need to complement each other with our gender roles and our biological advantages and disadvantages. Now, of course, yep, listen, some men developed PTSD, beat the hell out of their kids. They came home after a couple world wars, started hitting them with a glass rod. I get it. We own that. We own. <laughs> if we own that half. But feminists harm young men when they tell men, you don't know what it's like to give birth. Yeah. When they tell them that you, don't, you, you have no possible, they create a toxic environment. I talked about this with the recent election, how bitch, when Hillary Clinton was running, yeah. would become yeah. the new N-word. Remember? Yep. We talked about that on air. We got yep. so much flack, including from conservatives. Now, why did I say that? Because under Obama, race relations were at their worst in our lifetime. Fact. Wow. Now, you can't really observe it right now, but that's the Hillary Clinton syndrome. Remember that night when everyone went from being racist to they, who didn't support Barack Obama <laughs> to being sexist that's because they didn't support Hillary Magical Clinton? transformation. Haven't you felt that shift? It was oh, racism, absolutely. racism, racism. And then all of a sudden, Donald Trump's president and it's pussy hat. And it's just, it's all it is, is gender war in your face. I can guarantee you gender relations are at their worst. In 2016, here's an example. We just talked about this, the recent Reuters polls. Uh, young white men favored Democrats in 2016, 48 to 36. Now that's swapped, 46 to 37. That doesn't happen. You see the pendulum swinging hard the other way. And then you have a lot of men who don't believe in any of the hashtag Me Too campaign. Remember when we started, we were going, this is mm -hmm. terrible. I can't believe, I, I hope that these guys are, are, are burned alive, the guys who are sexually assaulting women. Yeah. But then every woman, and then every woman came forward and guys are going, hold on a second, I have to are look at this a little true? bit leery now yeah. because feminists have told us that we have to believe everything and that none of these women should be held accountable. But here, and this is what is also important, I want to leave it on this note, unless anyone else has anything to add there. Mm. Men need to hold other men accountable. Yes, yes of course. You can't, so you can't just pull the conservative version of John Stewart. So this is, this, I do think this is corrosive to society, the Boy Scouts issue right now. I think all of it, it's all, it's all a, again, what good can come of it? Sven Computer was talking about this earlier. It really is about just entirely eliminating gender lines, right? Again, which is a big irony. Why do you need diversity at that point? Um, but I don't want to be the John Oliver who just bitches about the things that I, that, that I do think are a problem. I think all of us agree are a problem. Men can, you can do things. They need to hold other men accountable. I see men's rights activists who just bitch about the brow beating. Yep. Now, here's the thing we can't believe that men have certain roles and then not own the responsibilities that come with them and just bitch about feminism. 
right? I encourage men out there, you want to start fixing this? And we've seen this with Jordan Peterson, with Gad said, we've seen a change with young people open to new ideas. Your goal isn't just to convert them. It's not your job to change their mind, but you can plant the seed. So if you're a man out there, guess what? I encourage you men out there to treat women well. Yes, alimony is unfair. If you look at the majority of states and a woman can take half and leave you and screw you, it is absolutely terrible. But the way to fix it is on a micro level, as a man, be a gentleman and encourage masculinity. If we're gonna talk about toxic masculinity and bitch about it and bitch about what feminists do, that's kind of the syndrome we had with the Donald Trump thing where people just came out and said, I hate liberal this, I hate leftist that. Well, I do too, but do you ever offer solutions? Mm -hmm. We see that from the left with John Oliver. He just bitches about it and oh, never ever offers a solution. It starts with you. Encourage men to treat women well, to treat them like women, to acknowledge the biological differences that make all of the wondrous splendor that is lady because you love them. Show them that you love them and women show men that you love them and it's okay to recognize your differences. Then we'll start making some progress. Hey, if you like this video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, or if you want to continue to enjoy free content, support us at lottowithcredit.com slash mugclub where you get the full nightly show, an hour every day free along with all of our friends' content. If not, you don't want to do any of those things. You're probably just here, you're watching me seething. You came here to hate watch. That being said, the internet was created for people like you.